What are some plot holes so big you can drive a truck through? In Supernatural, it's mentioned that demons react negatively to the word Christo, but the word is never mentioned again after that episode. Bart said Santa's little helper didn't eat Milhouse's goldfish and that Milhouse never had a goldfish. Then why did he have the bowl? Bart. The parents deciding to each take one twin to raise on different continents and never talk to each other again. Not sure if it counts as a plot hole, but there's one scene in Spider-Man 3 that's never made any sense to me. Peter takes a small sample of the symbiote to one of his college professors so he can get a better idea of what it is. The professor looks at it under a microscope and says it's definitely alien. I wouldn't let any of this stuff touch you. That's it. Proof of alien life right to you by one of your students and your only takeaway is don't touch it. That's ducking insane. C3PO. Human-cyborg relations. Is fluent in over 8 million forms of communication and, in fact, was built on Tatooine. Yet doesn't speak Jawa? Every Christmas movie where no one believes in Santa but then it turns out Santa does exist. Like, who did they think was putting presents under the Christmas tree? If Santa is real then it wasn't them. If DR Strange could do that portal thingy for that epic entrance, what's up with him and Stark worrying about not being able to return to Earth while in orbit towards the planet where they fought Thanos? I'd love to say something about Game of Thrones episode where they battle the army of the dead at Winterfell. Like how they stationed the army outside the walls of the heavily armed fortress without anything to screen the approach of the dead army. Or about how the artillery only had one shot before being useless. Or about how ridiculous it is to charge light cavalry straight into a mass of infantry, the dead, when they are better at ambush and harassing the flanks warfare. Or about how they wanted to draw the Night King and his dragon out when the most effective way to do that would probably be to lay waste to his army with your dragons. Or about the myriad of times a character looked to have certainly died fighting whites only for it foe cut away and then we see them fine later with no explanation. Or about how they decided to hide the women and children in the room with all the dead bodies when the enemy can raise the dead. Or about how they hired a frigging sword fighting martial arts expert to play the Night King only to never have him actually take part in single combat with anyone whatsoever. Like I said, I'd love to say something about that episode. But it was so dark I couldn't frigging see any of it sorry. In Black Panther, when he falls into the water, he gets pulled out by a fisherman from the northern tribe. Later on the movie, the leader of the tribe says that they are all vegetarians. They are also completely isolated. Don't trade. Why do they have a fisherman? In season 2 of Dexter, Rita asks Dexter how he knew how much heroin to give her ex-husband and Dux deduces that Dexter himself is a heroin user. Dexter was top of his class in med school and is a forensics guy. I can't imagine it would be hard for a guy like that to figure it out. Shrek 2 How Does a Donkey Duck a Dragon? In Friends Joey and Chandler watch Die Hard and refer to it as their favorite movie. In later seasons Rachel dates Paul who is played by Bruce Willis. Despite it being their favorite movie they never thought of mentioning that Paul looked like Bruce W. Willis. Ocean's Eleven. During the blackout scene. There is mad chaos in the casino. People stealing chips and just mass hysteria. Then the team goes to steal the money during the blackout. Afterwards, the lights are back on. And as they walk out of the casino, people in the background act like nothing has happened. No hysteria. Just a normal casino with people gambling in a fun and jovial manner. In Now You See Me Too, why and how did the FBI have any jurisdiction in London? Wouldn't that be more of an Interpol thing? But character continuity right? Snow White. Why didn't the witch just stab her after she fell asleep? Thanos destroying the stones in Endgame makes zero sense. Because his logic was that he did it so that his 50 stroke 50 snap can't be undone by anyone. But the universe's population will normalize to the previous amount in just a century or so, which is nothing to Thanos, considering he is over 1500 years old. Fun fact, Earth's population in 1920 was 1.9 bill. Today, 100 years later, it's over 7 bill. So snapping Earth's population to 50% would normalize back to over 7 bill in less than 50 years. Terminator 1. 
The ducking terminator grabs Sarah Connor by the shirt. But let's go of it. WTF was that? It's a ducking robot. As soon as it grabbed Sarah Connor's shirt a ducking don't let go ever program should have started. In Liar. Liar. Jennifer Tilly's character gets her way in the divorce despite cheating because she lied about her age. Therefore making the prenup null and void. However, this would also nullify the entire marriage. Entitling her to nothing. In Threat Level Midnight. The president was a villain and in the end Michael Scarn go work for him again WTF. Only flaw I can see in that masterpiece oh. When a bad guy is pushed into another bad guy and that's the two of them out of the fight. Mission Impossible 2. The guy is trying to create a cure to all fluss. To do this he has to invent super duper flu. He doesn't he invents a cure. Then they destroy the cure even though it cures all fluss. WTF. If Buzz Lightyear thinks he's real and not a toy, then why is he motionless and pretending to not be alive? Like all the other toys. When Andy plays with him, wouldn't he think Andy is some sort of giant alien monster? Woody might have explained to him they they need to remain still or something, but we never get an explanation. Any movie where a 1960s classic car driven by an amateur, outruns a modern, European, police car driven by a trained pursuit driver. Only one post on Harry Potter, Lily and James could have been their own secret keepers, thus removing their need to use Wormtail and give away their position to Voldemort most likely saving the Potters lives. Peter Pettigrew was also around for a few years while the Weasley twins had the Marauders map. He should have been visible. Ron was sleeping with a man every night and Fred and George were silent about it. Veritas Serum exists. Should have been extremely useful in dire covering who the Death Eaters were after the first fall of Voldemort. Unbreakable vows and time turners are also universe breaking magics. Where the duck did Goldblum get a MacBook to alien mothership adapter? Line missing from Titanic. Bill Paxton. Hey, old lady. Do you know what happened to that diamond necklace you wore that I've spent a fortune searching for? In every war movie a shell goes off 10 feet away from a soldier. He ducks and keeps running. In reality he'd be dead from the blast and shrapnel. If Mulan got sent home for underperforming, there's no way her father would have been accepted for training in his condition. He would have been sent home with honor intact. In Us when it explains that the government cloned everyone then gave up and just let these clones live underground in sewage tunnels for that long. Like it makes no sense. If they did clone everyone world they have at least disposed of them. Also why are they in the sewers if it was an experiment? Plus if everyone is eating those rabbits then there will not be that many. I don't know that has always bothered me. Daenerys Targaryen forgetting about the Iron Fleet. I'll never understand the rush to finish that season. In the mummy with Brendan Frazier. Imhotep steals body parts from the looters to put himself back together. At one point he takes the eyes from a person wearing glasses. So for the rest of the movie Imhotep should really be squinting at everyone. In Disney's Tangled the mother kept Rapunzel's birthday the same. So the festival of lights always happened on her birthday. This led to her curiosity and her leaving. The aliens in the movie signs melted when exposed to water. Why would you try to take over a planet that is covered in 75% water and where it rains on land regularly? Why does Ross, the largest friend, not simply eat the other five? Why would you need a suicide squad to save Midway City from Enchantress? As far as you know it won't require any skills that the military doesn't have. If it was to cover up government involvement then congratulations. You've now got a bunch of criminals who aren't loyal to you, resent you, and are more likely to try and blackmail or defame you. They're loose ends. You'll have to execute them anyway and lose the asset you built. In Justella, they knew for 48 years that one of the planets orbited close enough to suffer time dilation effects. Sent an astronaut there and then spent the next 12 years wondering why the astronaut sent there keeps turning their beacon on and off. In the Matrix how the hell did Cypher go into the Matrix and meet with Agent Smith without anyone knowing if you need an operator to send you in. In the final episode of Got Tyrion is put on trial for murder. 
yet this somehow turns into choosing the next king of Westeros. Imagine if during the O.J. Simpson trial, Simpson chose who the next president of the United States would be and everybody was okay with that. I love Inception to death. But why didn't Dom's father just bring his kids to France? In Titanic. They spared no expense to build a ship that was unsinkable but it still sank. Would never happen I roll. Gremlins. You can't feed them after midnight. Well technically it's always after midnight. 11:59 p.m. is still 23h59 meters after midnight. I was an anxious child and it ruined the movie for me lol. In Endgame, they could have simply traveled back to the week before Thanos destroyed the stones and ambushed him again. At it only have a 60 degree firing radius on their front. So at the Battle of Hoth why did the rebels attack them with their snow speeders from their front? Flank those itches. Every action movie in present day setting. Every rifle that you find. Including the vast majority of military rifles. Are not fully automatic. It would actually be a disadvantage to have a fully automatic weapon in the apocalypse. Snow piercer. That track would have been absolutely ducked with no maintenance in minus duck nosed degrees. The rail companies in England can't even manage to run a full service when there's a wet leaf somewhere on the track. In Star Trek Into Darkness, 2013. Con turns out to be a race genetically enhanced human with blood with regenerative healing powers. Which they need to save Kirk. So they have this big battle on the ground in which they need Khan alive. But they could have just used the blood from any of the 75 other cryogenically frozen superhumans they had on the ship. Why doesn't Vader recognize Sense his daughter while holding her for interrogation, yet can Sense his son her twin brother over an entire planetary system? Edit. Spell Vader correctly. Typo. I don't know if you could consider it a plot hole but it always bugged me the way Tommy Boy ended. Rob Lowe gets arrested but the stepmom that married Big Tom gets to go to on a date with Zalanxi. She should have been arrested as well. My biggest problem is with logistics in the movies. Like one of the Planet of the Apes sequels. The apes get attacked by the last of humanity. Men using these attack helicopters. And I'm sitting there thinking. Does anyone realize how many humans it takes to keep military helicopters flying? Voldemort went through so much trouble to get Harry into the Wizarding World Cup or whatever. Helped him win. Killed other students. Also Harry could touch a port key at the end of the final event. Why didn't he just like. Turn his pillow into a port key? May not qualify. But the T-Rex paddock going from ground level to resist in Jurassic Park. Ruins a pretty good scene. I wish they'd explained how Sirius escaped in the Prisoner of Azkaban movie. In one of the Narnia movies Aslan comes back to life but he could only come back to life if he was some sort of true sacrifice who was willing to give up his life honestly or something like that dart yet he also mentioned, after he revived, that he knew he would come back to life if he sacrificed himself. Then doesn't mean he isn't really a true sacrifice? The microwave MacGuffin in Batman begins with vaporize anyone standing near it in addition to the city's water it's supposed to evaporate. If Captain America uses a vibranium shield and it absorbs all vibrations then how does he bounce it? The entirety of Star Wars Episode 9. That movie was one big plot hole. At the end of the G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra, they blow up the ice on the surface that then sinks to crush the underwater base. But ice floats. Ice. Floats. The comedic twist in Meet the Parents was that Robert De Niro was a retired super spy. Not a humble florist. Ben Stiller only knew the truth after his fiancé confirmed his suspicions that De Niro wasn't a florist because he was absolutely deadpan when receiving a rare, expensive flower as a housewarming gift. If De Niro was such a great spy, wouldn't he have at least feigned interest and excitement to sell his cover story? I was 12 years old when I first saw Terminator 2. When it ended, I looked over at my dad and said Terminator 3 is going to be so good. And he was like they melted the Terminator and the chip. 12 year old me was like remember the arm he cut off and was stuck in the gears at the plant? I was disappointed as a kid when I realized it was a plot hole instead of a way to get a sequel when Terminator 3 came out and they didn't address the missing arm. Face off. 
The reason Eve knows that her husband is actually Castor Troy is because his blood type is different to Sean's. But if that was the case, then the face transplants would have been rejected. Oh so the Emperor's new Groovier sir. How did Kronk and Isma beat Pasha and Kuzco back to the palace? Dot. By all accounts it doesn't make sense. I'm still pissed that my Fallout 3 character died because I had to go into the reactor to shut it off even though I had a perfectly good super mutant best friend 5 feet away who could have wall striked in and come out no worse than having a day at the beach. Got. Why the duck didn't Bram inhabit the mind of the White Walker's dragon? And just use that to duck up all the White Walkers? Why did Jasmine suspect Prince Ali was Aladdin when she was convinced Jafar had him killed? Prometheus. First they descend upon a planet and seemingly by chance instantly find the place they are looking for. A bit later the cartographer gets lost. People on the bridge can't direct him back over the radio although they have a perfect holographic map of the entire site and everyone's position and the background of the shot. Then the expert biologist and physicists decide to take off their helmets in an unknown atmosphere and up to touch some alien looking slime with their bare hands just for fun. Worst part is I could go on. In the wizard. 1. How the hell did Jimmy find the warp zone in the first place? The odds someone found it on the first public playthrough however is unbelievably small. Like WTF. Does Jimmy have video game clairvoyance or something? 2. The event was based on points, not progression. So the warp zone won't really help you since it doesn't give you any points. In fact it hurts you since it takes away the time you have to accumulate points with the warp zone cutscenes. The fact that Jimmy died twice and had to start over, then took extra time to go through all the warp zone animations would have meant his score would have been fairly low. Couple that with the fact that Lucas had a flawless run without a warp zone, and there is no way Jimmy had enough points to win. If all Cinderella's magically transfigured stuff goes back to normal at midnight, carriage back into a pumpkin, dress back to being all dirty and old, then why the prince walking around with a glass slipper four weeks afterward? Shouldn't it have changed back into a normal dirty old shoe? He wasn't being vain. That song really was about him. Harry Potter should have just drank the liquid luck and go fight Voldemort. In the movie Joker Arthur has a six shooter. But fires it 8 times before running out of ammo. I can't unsee it now. In Spider-Man 2002, Green Goblin throws a device at the festival that immediately disintegrates several people. It is an instant kill device that he never uses again. If it's something he can only use once, why wouldn't he save it for a bigger threat like Spider-Man? What's the point in James Bond having a license to kill a shoot by the UK government when MI6 operates overseas where a UK license would be useless? Why doesn't the pelican save all the fish, in his beak, from the dentist's waiting room in Finding Nemo? The lid is always off. He could save them anytime. The 2011 film Limitless, a pill makes Bradley Cooper smart enough to predict the stock market. But apparently not smart enough to count how many pills he has left or consider what happens when he runs out. In Hannah Montana, Robbie Ray Stewart is both Hannah Montana's dad and Miley Stewart's dad. All he does is add a mustache when he is Hannah's dad, but does not change his name at all. In one episode Robbie Ray Stewart presents Hannah an award and calls her his daughter. However in another episode in the series, Rico calls Miley and Jackson's dad an old washed up country singer, meaning that it is common knowledge that Robbie Ray is Miley's dad. I mean none of this show makes sense. She's just wearing a wig but this truly grinds my gears. How did Peggy Hill grow up in Montana but live in the next county over from Hank? Harry Potter and Cursed Child is one gigantic plot hole. All of Ant-Man's powers. In the first Ant-Man movie, Pym says that when you shrink you maintain your same weight. This is all fine and good. And it explains why he can still punch people. Until you realize that means Pym was carrying a 30 ton tank in his pocket the entire movie. Like what the heck? And you can't even say that it's only the suit that maintains weight. Because in Endgame there's a scene where Scott grows and then punches one that Shatori wails straight into the ground. I understand why they said it maintains weight, but just make them escape the building without a tank. It's like they wanted there to be a plot hole, 
If anyone has an explanation for this, I would love to hear it. Why didn't they live by the waterfall? I don't understand the science behind zombies. Sure I can go along with the dead waking up eating others for sustenance. But why don't they dry out? Why don't the characters move to the arctic where the dead would freeze or the desert where they would dry out? Why can't they outrun them? Why do they always twist their ankle while running away? The zombies at the very least should dry out and reanimate when it rains and surely due to evolution the only people left would have really robust ankles that don't easily sprain as they would be more likely to survive? In the Book of Mormon most of the huge battles fought between Nephites and Lamanites had soldiers on horseback. This is all despite the fact that there were no horses in the Americas until the colonizers brought them over hundreds of years after the end of the Book of Mormon. Charlie's Angels 2. They knocked a helicopter off of a high up bridge, then jumped off the bridge, caught up to the helicopter in free fall, and flew it away. Obi-Wan wants to hide Luke Skywalker from his father, so he gives him to his uncle and aunt, in their home planet, without changing his name, and he himself lives near the kid while not changing his own surname. Cars. How do they have babies? What makes a car female or male? They have boys and girls bathrooms. Why doesn't R2 tell Luke about Anakin or Leia? Same goes for Yoda and R2 not recognizing each other and Vader not sensing Leia when she's right in front of him. The new haunting of Bly Manor. How the ghost never killed the parents who lived in the very room she haunted for decades or centuries killing everyone else in her path but them. So correct me if I'm wrong but my fiance registered sign and I watched the original Hellraiser last night. So spoilers ahead. Anyways. Towards the end of the movie after Kirsty makes good on a deal with Pinhead to hand over Frank they almost immediately turn on her and try to take her down as well. She of course sends them away via the lament configuration. Just confused me. Maybe I missed something but it just seemed like a dumb plot point with no explanation other than Ra. Were the bad guys. Throughout Naruto's early life, he was treated like it. No one wants to be around him. Later in the storyline, in order to give him a lineage that can equal to Sasuke, they created an Uzumaki clan that is closely related to the Senja clan and a father who was the previous Hokage. I'm not sure if anyone remembers, but the host of the tail beast are the village's secret weapon and they just let Naruto roam around and almost got killed at the end of episode 1. In Futurama. There's an episode where Fry pays an ungodly sum for the last can of anchovies on earth. But in a later episode, the one where they all go fishing, they had a large bucket of anchovies they were using as bait. I know this comment will never be seen, but it's good to get that off my chest. Using the Marauders map, Fred and George see Ron sharing a bed with a man named Peter every single night. 